number in numerically. Yeah. New number. Take up the incidental first because I got another meeting. Uh, 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 it wouldn't be at the Civic Center. Yeah, no. Continue with the council meeting, uh, item number 74, to consider a report from the appointments committee regarding vacancies on the Board of Assessment Review and the Board of Sewer Appeals. Councilor Amaro? Yes, we have two names to put forward tonight, and that will make Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Th thank you. <laughs> I do have a question, however. What about the Affordable Housing Committee? Are they all appointed? I know, and so are you. Yeah. But we, do we know the names of those who have been appointed? Yes, we do. I think the only committee that still needs to be appointed is the Thomas Jordan Trust Study Committee. Has that been advertised yet? It's been advertised on the cable TV uh, station. It hasn't been advertised elsewhere. Maybe we'll see if we can work something out to Cape Corey. By an ad. Good. Item number 75. To consider a request from Theodore Wainwright for a sewer extension. Is Mr. Wainwright here? Madam Chairman, before Councilor he, before he uh, speaks there, I have been advised from the town attorney that I should uh, pass on this item because of the closest relative of mine, Mr. Wainwright. So you wish to abstain? Yes. Do we have a consensus of the council that Councilor Jordan abstain? Yes. Yes. Okay, you are an abstainee. An abstention. Just a point of order, Madam Chairman. Robert's rules, could I go down in the audience and make a speech? <laughs> you cannot influence us. I have to consult with my lawyer. <laughs> are you serious? Not now. Later on. Okay. Mr. Wainwright. Mm, my name is Lee Lowry, oh. and I'm here on behalf of Mr. Wainwright, who's, who's here this evening also. I understand from Mr. McGovern that this is a fairly routine uh, referral uh, to the Sewer Advisory Committee. I have passed out what is a reduced copy of a portion of the approved plan of Riverview. And as you can see our, from my previous letter, the proposal is simply to extend the sewer line with a six-inch line from its existing terminus. And on your plan, if you can find starboard drive down at the bottom, I've simply marked, and believe me, this is not, this is just uh, an approximation of the en current endpoint of the sewer line coming in from the left-hand side of the page, if you would, up, up Spurwink Avenue. Mr. Wayne would, would propose to extend that uh, sewer line up Spurwink Avenue in a, in a right-hand direction as on your plan. Lot 10 that I mentioned in the letter is the last lot on the upper side of Spurwink Avenue, just to the right of Lot 11 there. It's cut off by this photocopy. We'd be bringing the, uh, uh, the line up there to just about the division line between Lots 10 and 11 
and I think the letter is inaccurate in one respect. That is, we would also be, we'd be looking to serve lots 1, 2, 3, 11, 10, and 12, which is this sort of interior lot in back of lot, lot number 11 and not lot number uh, 10. Lot 12, we think, would be served simply by means of an easement across lot 11 or lot 10 to get into the sewer line. Uh, the letter simply states, and I think this, to be fairly accurate, there's no uh, other vacant land that would be opened up to access to the sewer. This is all developed on the other side of Spurwink Avenue into Cape Colonial Village. Uh, and Mr. Wainwright already has uh, approved septic locations on all of these lots, so we're not looking to uh, increase any any numbers of lots in this area. Can I answer any questions if there are any? Any questions? Do we have a motion? Our Council of Tour. Madam Chairman, I move that we uh, recommend this to the Board of Sewer Appeal. Second. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, Councillor Tinsman? Uh, just a point of clarification. Are we referring this to the sewer? To, in, order to, in order to get recommending that they give us an opinion back from the sewer. You're field. not recommending a project? No, 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 recommending. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that we're not recommending it, that we perhaps I'll refer. refer. Okay. Just. I recommend that we refer this to the Board of Sewer Appeals so that we may get their input regarding it because they are the, the town board that is to have the overview regarding sewer and they are an advisory capacity to the town council. And that, that is, is a I, motion. That is what I wish to do. And that is a motion. It certainly is. And do we have a second? I'll we second do. It. Any further? I knew I said something wrong when I saw discussion. the three of you looking as quizzically as you did. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Oh, well, no, it's six to zero. Thank you very much. One abstention. Thank you. Uh, item number 76, to consider Riverside burial fees. Michael? Recommend that we, uh, to the town council, that you set burial fees at Riverside Cemetery uh, for both years 1988 and 89. The amounts I recommend are for adult burials, $150. That would be regardless of, of the day of week, uh, although burials aren't allowed on Sunday. Infant burials and cremain burials, $75. Move that we adopt. There's a motion to uh, second it. adopt the second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. Oh, excuse Sorry. me. Hold the vote. Uh, this, this, Councilor this, Jordan. This is just for the burial. This isn't the cost of the lot. No. This includes the cost of the lot. This just includes the cost of the burial. The lot is an additional $300 per lot. Thank you. Including perpetual kit. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Item number 48, uh, taken take, out of order. Move that we take the item 48 off the table. So move we'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, to consider a request from Georgius K. Gregorios, Stella and Ephrosina Macris, for a full time malt license for the Cape Elizabeth House, House of Pizza. Yes. Oh, sure. Okay. It is not a public hearing. Uh, Debbie, would you like to... Uh... Thank you. This item was first brought to the council at the March 14th meeting, which we did hold a public hearing. Uh, the council did vote on that evening uh, to table this item for proper board review. You do have included in your packet the decision from the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, dated March 23rd. They did approve the House of Pizza and included uh, the restrictions, including the time and so forth, uh, for the House of Pizza. 
I did uh, speak to Andrew Dukas, who was attorney representing the Macrises on last Friday. Uh, he would like to amend the application to delete the applicants of Georgius and Gregorius Macris and just leave Stella and Efrazini on the application. I did speak to the town attorney regarding this, um, and he did not see a problem uh, being that they were deleting applicants and not adding them. Um, I did speak to the building inspector regarding this matter. The next step is the construction of the actual building, the fire marshal's inspection, and then back to the town for an occupancy permit. As far as the time on this, uh, the building inspector said the uh, construction could be done uh, within two weeks with the approval and the, uh, the inspection and the occupancy permit. Uh, they could be opened at the beginning of May. Uh, so I believe this application is in order to be acted upon by the council. But with the, the deletion of two names. Correct. Georgios K. and Gregorios. Mm -hmm. Um, may I ask you a question, Debbie? When this went before the zoning board, uh, was did they know that the malt license was going to be part of it? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure if they. Um, it wasn't mentioned. Do, no, at all. no. I don't think their findings or their conclusions was based on the the liquor application at all. And Chairman, can I ask one other question about the yes. zoning boards? What do they mean by stripe an extra 20 spaces? Where, where would the extra spaces come? Other than the one, I don't understand. That, I guess that in the means. original plan down there, there were enough space for extra parking, but they were never striped off. Where is that? Because that parking lot is so jammed on Saturday mornings already. Yeah, I talked to the building inspector, and he said that, that in, again, in the original plan, there was space with the space would never striped off and the zoning board is going to ask them to do that and the, the reason for this was to encourage employees to park away from the building so I don't know if it's off. Does, anybody, does anyone know where it is? The extra Maybe space? I'll bet. They did mention that the employees okay. would be encouraged or asked to park out back. I don't know where out back is though because all you do is go around the IGA and there's the loading dock there. And yeah, go around the other way. The other way? Yeah. 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 Right the there's spaces back there yes. that can be striped off? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Chensman. <clears throat> the only question I have, I'd like to direct to a, to a attorney, and that would be regarding what rights we would have as town officials to deny this application. I mean, is there any criteria that it doesn't meet? Or do we have the flexibility to decide on our own whether or not we wish to establish a liquor license here? Um, we have <clears throat> no right to establish any additional criteria other than that what is required by state law. Um, the uh, highest court in Maine has ruled twice on it, once uh, two years ago, and has made it quite clear that local municipalities do not have uh, rights to regulate in this area, that they've been preempted by the state, states regulating the liquor sales. There are specific criteria. Uh, and I assume you you have them before you and have reviewed them in past uh, in some form or another. Uh, distances from schools and churches, uh, character of the applicant, uh, location of place of business. There are some more specific ones, but they really relate to a, an existing facility. Uh, have they had problems? And there are some specific criteria there that I could go into, but they're not applicable to a new establishment. Basically, if you have problems, uh, this municipality at the local level without going to the Liquor Commission can uh, take action. But uh, this is one of the areas that's been really preempted by the state, and if they meet the criteria, they must be given their approval. Okay, and, and just to follow up to that, the only real criteria we would have to deny it would be its proximity to the schools. If it's certain feet. Or a church. Certain feet. Proximity to four. And the stated number of feet. And, and just and I was yep. wondering if that had been established within the guidelines of the I don't know that for a fact. I mean, I don't know the facts in this particular case. The guidelines from the state are that it must be uh, at least 300 feet from a public or private school, church, et cetera. Does that mean entrance or school grounds? 
Uh, I believe that's entrance and has usually traveled. In other words, it's not as a crow flies. But I can uh, take a minute to check that. Debbie has the statute right here, don't you? Yes. As far as the, uh, whether it's the entrance or the property line, uh, is, it doesn't say in the statute. It may say in one of the two cases. One of the cases, <coughs> the Ellis versus uh, uh, Booth Bay Harbor case, the town had a requirement that one establishment must be at least 1,200 feet from another establishment. And the court said you couldn't do that. The state regulates distance from church and schools only. And that sort of requirement cannot uh, be applied by a local community. And the other case was uh, two years ago down in Wells, town of Wells, where it was a hotel or motel having a liquor license request for a pool that was outside. And the town said it was not in their best interest, denied the application. And again, the court said that they could not apply the community standards. Um, but again, as to the measurement, I know it's 300 feet. Maybe Debbie has the... Yeah, I know. The method of measurement. The distance must be measured from the main entrance of the liquor store to the main entrance of the school, school dormitory, church, chapel, or parish house by the ordinary course of travel. Okay, my, my concern is that the access road next to the public safety building may, in fact, be a main entrance to the school system, whether it be the high school, middle school, or the elementary school. And it was just a point of clarification whether or not that's been determined to be 300 feet or whether that is, in fact, a, an entrance. I was under the impression that door to door. Uh, Council Lester Jordan. Uh, can we just deny this because we don't want it? No. Well, why does it even come to us? If the state can say yes, why do not they even bother us with it? If you have no choice of saying yes or no. It's a good question. We've had one before that was appealed, uh, if anybody here recalls, and uh, there is a little discretion allowed. If a, an establishment is in existence and has proved to be a problem, and you can show that there's been disorderly conduct and repeated calls for the police to go down and, and to uh, disperse people, what have you, and vandalism, uh, that gives you the opportunity, who will be most likely to have heard these complaints, to exercise your discretion. But for a new operation, there's very little. I mean, the criteria are, are minimal. I don't see why we bother to put it on the agenda. Councilor Latore. I would like to express my frustration with the state at this point regarding the number 300 feet. I think it's an arbitrary number and absurd because I think it really depends on each community. To say that if, it, if an establishment is 305 feet or 299 feet could be the difference as to whether or not we should have liquor is wrong. It really has to do with the town, what's happening in the town, and what are potential places where people may gather or congregate depending on what, what type of, of a place that it may be. So I am extremely frustrated to hear the news and may still nonetheless vote to deny the number 300 is just picked out of the air, as far as I'm concerned, 100 yards, you know, as opposed to 101 yards. And these types of things, rather than giving community input and just fair, reasonable looking at the broad picture, the overall circumstances, here's a shopping center, one of the few we have in town, adjacent right next to a school, potentially kids walking out may more tend to congregate. I think it's just an unfair and, and really antiquated way of issuing liquor licenses. I just want to express my frustration with this. And I'm, I'm still not clear at all how I'm going to go. Uh, do you, yeah, members of the public are free to speak. Thank you. I'm Vincent Oliviero. And having heard this discussion, I think I'm going to be speaking basically to uh, present the sentiment of a large number of people in this community that I've dealt with. And I think. Uh, this may reflect a significant part of the community sentiment. What effect it'll have on the outcome doesn't sound too important right now. But basically, uh, we've been in this community have been struggling with some of the problems with alcohol, and we've been trying to deliver some messages, messages to the kids. And uh, I see that establishing liquor by the, or actually malt uh, liquor by the drink, uh, in the uh, shopping center 
is going to send to the kids another mixed message. And it's uh, not helping us in the overall program we have to overcome a basic problem. And uh, we have a, an area where the middle school kids come right after school. It's probably their main hangout where they really enjoy socializing. And uh, well, it's just one more thing for them to look at and say, another Michelob commercial and what have you. And I don't, just don't think it's really working towards the goal that the parents in this community are currently working towards as far as de-emphasizing the alcohol. I'm not against alcohol, but I'm trying to convey a consistent message to the kids. And I think this is one way of uh, going against that, uh, that goal. And the other approach that I have and the other concern that I have is from plain old safety. And uh, I'm an orthopedic sur uh, surgeon, and I've been basically at this for 20 years. And uh, I've just seen the outcome of a, lot of, of a lot of this. And to quote a very sage lady, a lot of people will go there for a uh, few pieces of pizza and a beer, but a certain number are going to go there for a, a few beers and a pizza. And that's the crew that will get on the road and make our roads that much more hazardous. And uh, I really would like the uh, council recognizing that this is a potential safety problem, just as people driving to Cape Elizabeth to purchase liquor, uh, that maybe we sh what we should do is send a message, even if the commission say would overrule it, and that is simply we vote against it. Let the commission overrule it. Let the people of Cape Elizabeth at least be heard as expressing opi an opinion that that's what they want. Councillor Jordan. Uh, I would just like to say that <coughs> I am really frustrated that, that this item is here on the agenda. I think it's good maybe to be it on the agenda. Maybe it gets a few things out. Maybe we can send a message, as he said, to the state. Because I am very much opposed to this, and I am not going to uh, bring up what is already said by Councilor Tor and this gentleman here as far as sending a message out to the children. It, it, uh, if I vote in favor of this, I feel I'm telling the kids, uh, here's a place for you to come and have a uh, pizza, and they'll, they'll get you a beer somehow or another, even though they'll sit here and say they will not, but how bad. Uh, wager that they would end up with one if they wanted it. So I would hope this council would vote to deny that liquor license so we could send a message to the state and maybe they would take a look at how uh, liquor licenses are awarded. Councilor Tinsman. I hope that we can perhaps send a, uh, an even better message to the applicants that is the people responsible for, uh, in many times, representing the citizens in our votes, that uh, perhaps if we vote to deny it, we may not have a legal right or basis in which to do it, but perhaps we're sending to the applicants the will of the community. And as receptive applicants, perhaps they would see it amongst themselves to withdraw their application or appeal to the state and run it as a uh, uh, pizza joint, which I think they'll be very successful without the liquor, uh, or the malt liquor. And uh, I'm not sure how the vote's going to come out, but if it's voted to deny, perhaps the applicants would see that it's the will of the community not to have this, and uh, it would be our hope, perhaps, that they that they listen to our vote and not their legal rights. Uh, and then you're next, Mr. Hall. Is this Andy? appropriate? Yes. Yes. My name is Andrew Dukas, and I was here before you once before representing the Macrises and House of Pizza. And I think I should address a few of your concerns now. Uh, listening to you, I, I definitely get the feeling that some of you are uncomfortable with this proposal. This is not something that has regularly come up at, in Cape Elizabeth. Um, it has come up regularly in other towns because they're probably towns of a different nature. I think I should point out that uh, what we're talking about here is a pizza uh, store, a eat-in and take-out pizza store with the option to have a beer with pizza. Some people find the thought of a pizza with a soft drink to be abhorrent. Uh, I personally find nothing wrong with that but there are those who would prefer a malt liquor. Uh, the idea is to sell pizza 
with a beer, if you prefer, uh, to those who are old enough. It's not a place to sell beer with a slice of pizza. The owners don't intend to sell beer with a slice of pizza. The, the focus here is on pizza, and that's the main uh, sale item. Uh, you've, you've addressed some concerns with the state statute, and I can understand that. Like anything else, it's a product of, uh, of a give and take. The state did decide to preempt the area to, to get some uniformity across the, across the state uh, in this area. They thought it might be a little easier to enforce if, if all the standards were the same, and that meant state standards. And since the state does do a lot of the enforcement, I can understand that. 300 foot, it's a compromise. Uh, it's a compromise between a city school and a variety store in the corner. And on the other hand, you might have a general store in a small town in a school miles away. So it's a compromise, length of a football field. Uh, you, you indicated that you're not quite sure why it's here in front of you. Well, the state does give you a say-so in uh, a liquor license. Reason being is you're the people who are going to see the problems of liquor licenses if any uh, problems come up. And they're telling you that, hey, if something comes up that you don't like, you've got the right to pull that license. You don't have to renew it. And I think they're, they're recognizing that you are the people who are in the driver's seat in that case. You're the people who have to live with any problems if they come up and you're the people who are going to solve them. In this case, there's no track record. There isn't a pizza parlor there right now. You don't have anything to go on. Uh, I understand your frustration here. You can't deny it outright. But be assured, if there is a problem, you do have the right to, to step in and put your minds at rest about it. Um, there is a school nearby. It, it is farther than the 300-foot uh, minimum. I think it's substantially farther by the traveled way. Uh, kids will probably know that there's beer sold in there with pizza. Kids will know that there's beer sold at your variety stores and at the IGA. They'll probably know that most of them can go home and find a beer in the refrigerator. But I don't think that that's the only thing you should look at when you say what's influencing kids with alcohol. There's a lot more to that picture. And I don't think that really is a a major bearing on this application. You have to look at the whole picture of what, what is liquor and what does liquor mean to, to your youth of your town. And I think in that, in that scope, um, I, I don't think it has a real bearing on this application. Uh, if we take it, uh, if we take it the way it's meant to run and under the laws of the state, there should not be a problem. And I don't see that not happening in this instance. I see no problem coming from that. Uh, I think if kids want to get beers, there's e easier ways of getting beers than trying to get a glass pitcher of beer in a pizza parlor. Thank you. I'll be available Andy, for questions. Andy, may I ask you a question? If we did deny this uh, malt license, uh, the kids could go over to the IGA and buy beer and bring it in. Couldn't they? To the pizza parlor? Yeah. No. They, they would not. Couldn't, you wouldn't allow? No, them. there would be no. I mean, if they were of age. No. 14 year olds. There would be no consumption of beer that wouldn't be sold on the premises. It has to be sold on the premises to be consumed there. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Hall had something. And then Mr. Leahy, and then Mr. Creelman in order of their... Thank you very much, uh, Town Council. My name is Richard Hall, and I would hope that you would vote against giving this license. We have enough problems in this town with, with liquor as it is and, and, and conveying to our teenagers. And not only do I see it a problem with our own teenagers, I see people coming from out of town, gone to Crescent Beach on the way home, and say, oh, there's a pizza place, they got beer, let's stop and have a beer. And we've got problems enough with the parking there, as, as has been pointed out, and if we bring in a lot more outsiders, we're still going to have more, more problems. So I would hope you would vote against it on that alone. And I have a question for the 
town council, I mean for the town lawyer, is uh, if the people of the town commission the state or petition the state, would the state be more apt to listen to a petition from the people saying that they don't want beer license in this particular way? I don't know if there's a mechanism to do that, unfortunately. Well, they have petitions, so we vote on the atomic energy every two minutes, so I don't see why we can't have a petition whether we want beer in this town or not. That's right. Well, I didn't say a dry town. I'm talking about in this particular incident. You don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I don't know how it works. I would hope, again, you would vote against it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Leahy? I don't want to take back what I said before about the regulation by the state. I think the state's law is very clear that the commission, the State Liquor Commission, cannot, may not allow any establishment within 300 feet. Separately, there is a provision that you can consider the location of the place of business. You must issue findings tonight, and I'm simply saying if it's the will of this council to deny the application, then I would, if it is based upon the location and its proximity to the school, I think you should have a finding that it's due to the proximity to the school that you find the location to be inappropriate. I'm suggesting that as your council. They mean if you're really basing it on the denial because of proximity to the school, but it seems to be somewhat, that's the most available opportunity I see in this legislation to deny an application as location of the place of business. So, again, I'm not preempting anyone's vote here. I'm simply saying if there's a thrust that's developing against the application, the most supportable finding from the facts presented to you tonight would be the location of the place of business. What about with regard to the location, the fact that it's on the way to two, three state parks? Would that be legitimate? It's a fact, Madam Chairman. I mean, these are hard to judge at this point in time, but location is a factor. On the one hand. On the other hand, we have the 300-foot measurement from school, so I think any vote that would be based upon a location could include any factors you found relevant, and that would certainly be one. Well, do stand by. Dr. Creelman. Thank you. Yes, I'm a physician and a psychiatrist, and a fair number of my patients actually are abusers of drug and alcohol, and I think it's interesting tonight, and I want to disagree a little bit. I'm sorry, I have a bit of a hoarse voice. I want to disagree a little bit with Attorney Dukas in that I think we do have a track record, and we do have a problem. It's interesting, about a week ago, the Press Herald, on the front page, had an article quoting the main office of alcoholism and drug abuse prevention, indicating that 12% of the state residents of Maine are severely impaired by substance abuse. Another 12% are moderately impaired. It seems to me this is one commission of the state that may be at odds with the commission that potentially may overrule the council if the council votes to deny this request. It seems to me the proximity to the school is a major problem with regard to this liquor request. I'm not against alcohol, but I think in this particular case it's irresponsible and a danger to our kids. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public who wishes to speak? May I please ask the attorney a question? Are there any other houses of pizza around with malt liquor licenses? None around with liquor licenses. Then would you answer this question, why have they selected Cape Elizabeth for malt liquor license? Why don't they come into this town, be compatible with the town, and withdraw their request? I'm afraid I can't answer that one for you. Thank 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 you
Council of Tory. Thank you. I would like to just clarify my position a little bit more is that I, after having thought about it and distilled down all the thoughts, am going to oppose the liquor, li the uh, granting of the license based on the location in its proximity to the schools, but I want to disassociate myself with the idea that it has something to do with it being on Route 77 or on the way to State Park. Certainly, if you look at Route 302, there are restaurants. There will always be restaurants. What we have here is a very unique situation, which I feel will cause us to be justifiably take our case to the state. It's simply too close to the high school. Maybe it's not exactly the 300 yards, <coughs> or maybe it is, as Councilor Tinsman said, we could consider entrance to the school to be the beginning of that access road. But anyway, you look at it, to me, it's a very unique situation, coupled with the law that, that Mr. Dupas was good enough to send us, stating the licensee may employ a person who's 17 years of age in serving or dispensing of liquor on the premises if an employee is at least 18 years old, uh, is present in a supervisory capacity. This puts up an incredible peer pressure type of situation that could develop. You could have kids walking two-minute walk from the high school to a, a fellow student serving liquor and a student who just graduated the year before as the supervisor. That, that, that's the kind of a potential incendiary situation <coughs> given the location of the school that I just don't, I just can't possibly endorse. So it's, it's most unfortunate and, and my good friend Andy, I don't, I don't like to oppose this, but it's just, it's just far too many circumstances put together that I would have to take a unique step as a non-prohibitionist and, and still, <laughs> still uh, oppose this. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The motion. I move. I move that we deny the uh, license based on the location of the business. Second motion. You want to add the school to? Due to its what? proximity to the due to its proximity to the school and the unique spot that that shopping center has in our town, to proximity to three schools and the unique uh, situation that that shopping center has in our town as a place where children congregate after school. I'll second that. Any further discussion? To Councilor Tinsman. I'd just like to ask the uh, Chief of Police while he's here, if there are any unique situations uh, to that shopping center that may lend itself to uh, uh, orderly egress and uh, to the shopping center. Is that a common site for accidents? Uh, is it an accident just waiting to happen? Uh, do you think your beers will affect that situation? Uh, I'd, only, I'd only speak to access, uh, and certainly that is a congested area down there as far as uh, availability of parking. Uh, we do have a number of accidents there, which generally result from people backing out. Uh, there's not too much space between those two vehicles. I believe the uh, people responsible for the shopping center are going to try some new uh, so, uh, new line design to, so that they are 45 angle park instead of 90 degree. Um, that would be a concern, yes. And obviously uh, concern in uh, drinking and driving is always a concern. All right, we have a motion before us and a second. Are you ready for the vote? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. And we'll move on to item number 77. To consider referring to the Ordinance Committee responsibility for reviewing the Town Ways Ordinance. Michael? The Town Ways Ordinance presently uh, has three different articles. One is entrance to federal aid highways. Uh, the second one is excavations and utility installations. And the third is construction of streets in compliance with subdivision requirements. In keeping with the town council practice of customarily, uh, I don't know if that's not the right term, of reviewing ordinances uh, from time to time, we'd like you to take a look at this uh, ordinance over the next couple months, particularly uh, to look over the excavation and utility installation requirements but also perhaps to develop a new article, which would be an Article 4, which would relate to heavy load limits uh, on local roads, something that certainly ought to be studied and, uh, by the Ordinance Committee and perhaps... Not wide road. Not wide load. Did I say wide? No, you said heavy. No, we're not getting into the wide load again. <laughs> heavy loads. They well, put it, if they want to, they're welcome to. We went through okay. that one. So um, uh, okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor of referring this to the Ordinance Committee? Opposed? It's unanimous. And we have now come to that portion of our agenda where we 
ask for a citizen's discussion of items not on this agenda. Mr. Capano. Yes, I'm Ed Capano from Spoon and Kavanaugh. Uh, a while back, Councilor Tinsman made a su suggestion about um, the time when, hooray, I think the bridge is going to be <laughs> built on the Spearwink River connecting Cape and uh, Scarborough. And he made mention of a possibility that the state would allow fishing off the old road, because I'm almost sure they will not do that on the new brick. Now, I wonder if we looked into that, because I thought that was an excellent point, because I do know of uh, men and women that do go down there to fish. Michael? <laughs> Probably. That's right. It's, uh, yeah. I think what Councilor Tinsman suggested that we keep the bridge abutments as part of the purchase of land from Rachel Carson. Yeah. This is true. Uh, the, a mitigation plan had to be developed in order to reclaim a certain amount of wetlands. Part of the wetlands that the state agreed to reclaim were the wetlands with the present bridge approach and bridge abutments are located. So they, they came, they signed off after months of negotiations uh, that they would remove the old bridge abutments and the approaches and uh, make that into wetlands. Are we uh, going to look forward to having the ledge removed at the entrance to the transfer station? Yes, we are. Uh, we are been trying without success to get an estimate from a local contractor who does blasting <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know the, the gentleman has a has a customary price per yard and you know we we know it will be that customary price per yard uh, and uh, hopefully he's watching this evening and uh, we'll, we'll make that a higher priority thank you are there any other items that, that any citizen would like to bring up? Anything that any councillor would like to bring up? Yes, Councillor Amaral. Uh, now that we have made all the new appointments to the various committees, it is time to have an orientation program uh, for those people. And I probably wonder if there are uh, what would be the days for the councillors who would be involved, which are Anybody who wants to come, but we uh, particularly need the chairman of the council and the finance committee. Any audience? Finance committee? That's the whole council. The chairman. The chairman. Oh, the chairman. And the chairman of the audience committee. Yeah, and there is a, uh, a calendar <coughs> in your uh, packet uh, which shows what dates have been already set aside for uh, various town meetings this month. Madam Chairman, may I ask that we make that decision Wednesday evening because I didn't bring my appointments calendar with me because I didn't think I needed it. We're going to be meeting again Wednesday night. And I have a large number of evenings blocked off, unfortunately. Yeah, we really should make this a priority because uh, people are already beginning to work on their committees, and I think it's really important to have an orientation. So In that case, I withdraw my request. No, I don't mean it has to be. No, I mean, if, if, do it, so. if everybody, if we have the, we can do it. It's in the packet, the, the town meeting schedule. You don't have the other one. This No, but that's... It looks like we couldn't do it really until the first week of May anyway. Schedule is pretty full. I don't see how you could do it for the first of May. I, I got to get the playoffs in once in a while. You're already meeting twice that first week of May. What day? The second and the fifth. The okay. second beginning at 6 p.m. right through with the school department and the fifth, the continuation of the review of the school budget. Just so in the morning, so you see it. <laughs> Well, could we, is it possible to... <coughs> Do you want to announce this on TV, or is it possible to adjourn the meeting and let's come up with a date, or should we leave everybody standing out here while we think about it? I got one comment. Oh, let's leave that. I suggest that we uh, 
think about it and um, set a date on Wednesday. I think that's a good idea. Councilor Jordan. I was just wondering when when the tall stools are going to be here for the TV people. Those are an item in the fiscal year 1989 budget. If you, when you review that account, uh, if you like to give her the early authorization for us to get them ordered, to uh, be fine. But that's where it is at this point. You don't have a contingency fund that you could get them some stools. If if the council wants me to use the town council surplus. fund to go out and buy stools, I will. I think you should. I come back at the June meeting and saying it's over by that amount, you'll understand. You've got undesignated surplus there. Uh, we'll I got one comment, Madam Chairman, that I'd like to throw out. That after the last meeting, I mentioned about items that's not on the agenda, possibility we could take it up first. And I just wonder if any of you other councils had any thoughts on that, because I think it's something that we really should wrestle with and decide or even try instead of letting someone sit here the whole meeting and then decide whether he wants to get up and say anything or, or not. I think it'd be a good idea, and I think it's worth a try. I've had a couple people call me and thought it was an excellent idea. I'm sorry. I would like to be clear on what exactly you, you're suggesting. That. My suggestion is that uh, we have, after... Before we get into the agenda, that if anybody has anything they'd like to bring up not pertaining to the agenda item, that they would be heard. It's similar to what we have at the end of the meeting when it says anybody got anything to say that wasn't brought up on the agenda. And I would just like to see it tried first. And if it don't go, I talk to another community and they feel it works very well. And some people come and bring up what they got and then they'll go home and watch the rest of it instead of sitting here or coming in late just to bring it up. Councilor Tinsman? I think it's an excellent idea. I think it was brought up earlier and dismissed. It could have been the person who brought it up. No, I don't think it was that. I think that perhaps to make it all work, uh, you may want to put a time limit on this. And that it would perhaps be the first up to 15 minutes or half hour of the meeting so that it is regulated. And the speakers are regulated for the amount of time they can talk. But I think it's an excellent idea, and I'd like to see it tried. And uh, certainly at the end of the meeting, you could ask the same thing if anyone has thought of something during the meeting. Uh, certainly that's where we get uh, our communications a lot of time with, uh, with some of the lines. So I think it's a good idea. Councilor Amaral? If we did that, I'd like to recommend we start our meetings earlier because we could have a 11 o'clock set up. And the purpose of having an agenda is so that people uh, will think about what, <coughs> what items they want discussed on the agenda and other people will know what's coming up. But it's very important to have an agenda and, and to uh, the fact that we allow people to speak on every item that's on that agenda. Uh, it's very important, but if you're willing to limit it to uh, uh, a time period at the beginning, that's fine, but I wish we'd also <coughs> maybe at 7 o'clock then so that we can get through our agenda and not have to go into a meeting with Me? Just as a point of order, what is the exact procedure we would have to follow? Does this require a first reading? It's a changing of the town council rules, Michael? Uh, how do we get it? I mean, we've talked. This is the second meeting we've talked about it, and at least at least three of us want it, or four of us. How do we get it on? How do we get it in officially, correctly? I, I don't recall the last meeting that that anyone other than Billy mentioned, or Council of Billy Joy mentioned it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, is it the council rules set set forth the order of the agenda? I'm yes. Have a copy in front of me. I don't think the procedure. A, we altered that procedure tonight by. <coughs> By working on our public hearings, I would think we could just start this. Again. And also, we talked about reports and correspondence being first, and we changed that without having to change the council rules a while back. So maybe we could just, if we all agree on it, or you know, however we need to do it, if we need to bring it up at the next meeting and formalize it, I'm just asking that that the process somehow give us a chance to vote. I think you do it at the next meeting. Set it now to go on the agenda for the next meeting. That's fine. I mean, about July What's 3rd. the penalty if we I agree with that. We don't have to listen to them. Another state censure. Like we might get for what we did tonight. 
Do you guys want that? Cape is on. Go ahead. Why do they keep pointing at us? It's okay for that to later broadcast. Did you have it before the public hearings or after the public hearings? I believe. I'll tell you, I'm leery about it taking over the whole agenda. That could be a very, Boy, I wonder why, very I wonder why I would when the only ones we've had to be have been Harry and, um, Harry and Ed over the last three and a half years I've been here. It's in the council rules. Per person wishing to address the council on an item not appearing in the agenda shall do so only after disposition of all items appearing on the agenda. So we'd have to do a first reading. Can we do a first reading tonight? Must have been a reason for that. First reading reduced to writing is what it says. What you're looking for is to strike to change that rule. Bring it after the meeting if you want. Unless we dispense with the rules tonight. No, we wouldn't do it. Are we adjourned? Should we be adjourned? So why couldn't we have an item on the agenda next meeting and then uh, we can act on it then and then move it on, have a first reading next meeting? Instead of taking something up out of order tonight for that. So I'll move we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Night. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Especially watching the tape delayed for I guess.